Hey, how's it going guys? Bob from Bobots Trains and Maker Zone. Today I'm going to document this softball scoreboard project. I did the original concept, design of a circuit board, populating the components, it involves some 3D printing, and designing the enclosure and putting it in there and powering it. Let's get started. I started very simply in the beginning with an Arduino Uno, some breadboarded components, a 2.3 inch seven segment display, just to get the concept of how to use the TPIC shift registers. I then added an infrared sensor and a remote control, did the coding in the Arduino so that I was able to control some of the numbers it displayed. I then had to learn how to wire up TPIC shift registers in cascading mode. I cascaded the shift registers, so on the right I had the visitor score that I could change up and down, and on the left, the home score up and down. I continued this process with the cascading of the shift register chips, and eventually ended up where I could control the home score on the left, the visitor score on the right, I added some 10 millimeter LEDs for balls, strikes, and outs. And I'm running out of buttons on my controller, so another controller handles the inning. This is all handled by the sketch in the Arduino programming. So let's just take a look at my overall design idea. This infrared sensor up here feeds into the Arduino and um, the UNO has a program and it can talk to these TPIC 6B595 shift registers. Okay, and these data lines um, come out and they go over through resistors to each of the segments on a seven segment display here. Now these are 2.3 inch common cathode seven segment displays. And initially I had the ones digit here and then the tens digit on the right, because this serial line out of the ones, when all the ones get up to one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, it cascades over and changes the tens digit. Now, of course, these will have to be reversed on the final project. The tens will have to be to the left of the ones. You could also handle it in the Arduino software. Now, another thing to make note of is these 2.3 inch displays need something like seven to nine volts, I believe. Um, so I had to tie the grounds together here and that will have to be supplied externally because the Arduino can't feed that much down here as well as the current. So at this point of the project, it looked like this. The Arduino Uno with the coding that I did could feed the logic into these 2.3 inch seven segment displays for the home and visitor score. This was a 1.8 inch seven segment display for the innings. Then I had 10 millimeter LEDs in white for balls, strikes, and outs. Uh, the infrared sensor was here and I could use these various controls through the programming logic to control the different parts of the board. Now, originally I started out with 7.4 logic chips but I switched over to the T-Picks because they were able to sync more ground current through. There's a five volt voltage regulator here to feed the 10 millimeter LEDs down here and that smaller display because these larger displays need like 7.5 to 8 or 9 volts and they'll have to be externally supplied. Now this works and that's great, but you can imagine it's going to be quite cumbersome to put all these wires and these small components inside of an enclosure. Let's take a look at this. I was trying to imagine myself wiring up all this stuff on some type of a perf board and having it come out accurately and look at all these little resistors would be hitting each other. I don't, it, it, to me, it was like something had to be done and I knew where I had to go with this even though I didn't have the skill. And of course where I decided I had to go is I had to design a circuit board. Uh, JLC, PCB, my boards arrived with my components. I had to learn easy EDA software in order to design a circuit board. I had never done this before. Well, I had a small one done a couple months ago, but I used different program and different manufacturer. So this was, I don't even know how I did it looking back on it to tell you the truth. It was pretty intense, but I don't remember much of what I did to tell you the truth. Anyway, let's take a look at this. I had, I think five or 10 boards manufactured, pretty good price. Um, 
And we'll take a little in-depth look here at these, but I really didn't know what I was doing, but it turns out at the end of the project, they work perfectly. No bodges or anything were required, but I pulled it off and it made wiring it up a lot simpler. So I designed this circuit board. It's about 300 millimeters by 240 millimeters vertically. Um, this will have my display. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put headers like this on here so I can pull them out. So I'll have my display there. I have this and this. All my logic chips will go here. So this one says uh, home tens, home ones, visitor ones, visitor tens. This one's for the innings and this one is for the stats down here. Balls, strikes, outs. I'm going to put an Arduino Nano here, a DC jack, and here's two switching regulators, one for 5 volts, which handles this stuff, and the Arduino, and then one for 9 volts, which through the correct, capac uh, through the correct resistors here will handle um, these four up here. These need 7.5 volts. And this is a connection for the infrared sensor. So, I never really did a board before, especially one this big, and it will be interesting to see how this works. So in the next section, we're going to populate the circuit board and talk about that as we go along. I have my components list, and I think I'll start out with this power supply section here with the voltage regulators and some of the filter caps, and that way we can get the 5 volts and 9 volts and check some spots on the board and make sure we're getting our voltages. I'm going to start by doing the power supply area. So I'm going to put the DC jack in with the filter cap, the diode for reverse polarity protection, and then the switching voltage regulator for 5 volts, the one for 9 volts with their caps. I need to install the switching voltage regulators. The 2490 goes in here for the 9 volts. A 2450 goes in here for 5 volts. Now I have my two voltage regulators here for 9 and 5 volts, switching regulators, and my DC power input. So if I supply something like 12 volts DC here, maybe 1 amp maximum, I should be able to get my meter and probe some of these points on the board where I know there should be certain voltages and check them and see. So turn the meter on here. Now if I probe where the Arduino is, V in and ground, I should get 9 volts. Yep, that's good. And over here on one of the logic chips, I should get between V in and ground 5 volts. Yep, 5 volts. Excellent. Good start. Now I guess start with some of the lowest components first. Here's a resistor that I could only find in this package. It's surface mount. Didn't really want to do it, but I guess I'll learn quick how to do this. So let's uh, put this guy on here. I'll just uh, hit this pad here, put a little bit of solder on it. Bring this guy in with tweezers and try to get the one side, try to get him, keep him from tombstoning. Okay. Now I flip the board upside down and I'll do the other side with my right hand on the iron. Nice. You know, they put some nice plating or something on these um, pads here. Takes the solder very well. Well, I guess soldering my first surface mount component was a success. Now this section right here is for the infrared. I just put that on. Let's go after these two resistors. This is a 47 ohm, this is a 22K, and then I'll put a header on here for the IR receiver. Okay, with that done, let's go after these two segments, which means I need these two chips, logic chips up here to feed them. Uh, I'm gonna use these sockets in case I have any problems with the chips. That'll make it easier. So we'll give that a shot. This is for the home ones, which is this home ones. So I'm going to put this chip in here. Now for these I'm going to do some resistors. Seven of the resistors are 390 ohms. 
and one of them is a 910 ohm, this center one, and that's because that's for the decimal point and it only has two LEDs in it. Then I'm going to put these headers in here like this and then I can put that in there. Now we have all the resistors in here and we have the 10 pin headers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to where the Arduino is and I'm going to put some of these 15 pin headers in here and then I'll solder up the Arduino and put it on there. Now we need an Arduino Nano so what we'll do is get one of these guys out and I'll put the headers on and solder him up and I can put it on the board. So I take the Arduino Nano that I attach the headers to, I attach it to USB, compile my sketch, and upload it. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so here we are at some moment of truth. I don't know which one. Here's our Arduino. Populate him into the socket. Here's my infrared sensor. Just plug it in here. Okay. Take my 2.3 inch seven segment display and fit him into these 10 pin headers here. Got to line this up. Luckily the uh, Silk screen on the board matches up too. All right. Put in my T pick shift register chip here for my one segment. Okay. And apply my 12 volts to the barrel in jack. Power it on. Okay, my Arduino came on. The program should run and I should get something on this segment and it's not working so I guess I'll have to do some troubleshooting offline here. So I had to do some troubleshooting and it turns out that my infrared notation here is backwards. Notice the red is on the left but here the red has to go there even though the diagram shows it this way. So now when I plug it in this boots and I do get this and my remote control does work. Okay, so I finished the rest of these chips and sockets, um, these two displays with the resistors under there. So now what I have is this one and this one. So now I have all the resistors in here and the headers for the innings. Let's plug this guy in. So basically we're just going to snap that down in there. And we'll plug it in. Cool. Okay, so now when we have Innings. Now I have these 10 millimeter LEDs and these so what I can do I guess is put them in here like that and then what I'll do is I'll put them down on the board and then they'll stand proud so it'll be like these over here and they're done. I mean, I have to say, I'm a little surprised, actually pretty amazed that this thing works. My first attempt at making a circuit board. Home score, up and down. Visitor score, up and down. Inning. Balls. Strikes. And outs over here. Huh. Now, I don't know how I'm going to fit this in an enclosure and how all that stuff's going to work and I probably have some of my tolerances wrong, you know, but 
it actually works electronically it works it amazes the heck out of me pretty interesting I took a piece of foam core 3 16 inch foam core and cut out the sections and then put in some motherboard standoffs some of these to keep this separated from the electronics put some screws in around the area to hold it together these displays um, when you see them on your alarm clock they have like a red filter on them this is a piece of red acetate kinda like what you have on your 3D glasses so see how you can hardly see the display here because the ones the white ones aren't being filtered out so I put a piece of red acetate over it and it gets a little better I don't know what the answer is um, the more sheets of this I put over the more it obscures it and now you start to see the individual LEDs that are making it up but you know you get like four sheets of this stuff on there I don't know now the problem is the camera can't focus but see it, it, the display is a little clear because it's filtering out these segments over here which show up a lot more on there so I don't know what the answer is I guess there's some type of filter you need to put over this I'll just put four sheets of that okay another enhancement is that somebody asked about the innings and how you know it's the top or the bottom of the inning well I didn't have that figured out but because this was coded I was able to change the computer code so when you change innings now this little dot down here I knew there was a reason I wired up that dot so bottom of the third and you keep clicking it it's fourth bottom of the fourth fifth bottom of the fifth okay so that was relatively easy to implement because I hooked up that uh, decimal point there and then I just had to code for it the other thing is I added a different remote control so there's enough buttons on this one now um, and it turns out that this one's a little different when you push and hold this you can actually repeat you know up and down as opposed to having to keep hitting the button over and over which you can still do but you have to do it in half second increments or if you just push it and hold it it'll just go by itself so it turns out that's pretty cool and of course you know uh, balls and strikes and all that good stuff again all right I continue to work on it the challenge now has to do with this filter and this display and then physically putting it in a box I'm going to show these little pieces here because I may not get an opportunity I 3d printed this which sits over top of these to hold them in here so I got there I got one here, I got one here. Now these, they, they, they smoosh down, they, they crush down. Let me show you. See what happens to them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print these little things. These are little X's. Well now that now that this broke off I can show you. What I'll do is I will wedge this in between here like this and keep it up in the air and then put it on the board. So then it can't, it can't push down. Okay so if you remember this little grommet goes in here okay and what happens is the LED pushes in from the back and up through but see when you go to push it it's hard to get in there and that's the problem I've been having see like that so if I put the little spacer on there it'll keep this from crushing down when you push in that's the theory these little things really came out nice look how they look how well they support that on there 
that worked really, really nice. Very solid, very strong. And these, one here. Now in preparation for my enclosure here, what I did was I have to take some type of a template here and cut out these areas in this box, similar to what we see on this old faceplate here. Okay, and the infrared sensor there, the LEDs down here. I just sort of marked everything out. The holes I pushed through with an awl using a template from the back. Let's open this up here. So using the old template, we can see how it's going to go. Actually, the real template that has some accuracy to it is this. This is what I printed the circuit board from, so it should be darn near 100% accurate. So I just got to put enough space in here, move it up to the top so that I can get the battery pack, which I found online. There was one that'll suit my needs. It'll fit in here. Hopefully there's enough space between here when I'm done that this whole thing comes together. These are my 3D printed bezels for around the displays and then the little uh, support pieces that I made for the LEDs. Around about this time, it should be noted that I wanted to mount the Arduino directly on the board so it was shorter. It didn't hit the inside of the case. So I had to remove all that and then desoldering. I messed up the trace you see on D10 over here. So I had to put this yellow bodge wire on to connect D10 down to the trace on the board. Now I took each one of these bezels and I took four layers of the red acetate and inserted them in here. So now these bezels can be put in as one piece over top of each of the displays. I just want to note some power supply options. Because I wanted 12 volts, I tried this. It's a DeWalt drill battery, 12 volts with an adapter, which allowed you to plug directly into a barrel jack. This worked, but my circuit required close to 12 volts. So as soon as it dropped down to 11.8 or seven, my circuit went out. So this didn't last long enough, but the concept was pretty good. Then I almost went down this path with a 14.4 DeWalt NICAD battery pack. And I would just place, cut this wire, as you see with this little connector on top. That probably would have worked, but the form factor of the battery wouldn't have fit inside the case. And I finally did find something on Amazon. This is a talent cell 12 or 24 volt. I'm using the 24 volt output because I have my regulators, the switching regulators, which will regulate it down to where it needs to be. And that way I'm assured I always have at least 12 volts coming in. And the form factor worked great inside the case. It's rechargeable, includes the power adapter. Okay, you can see I painted up the case here with some black prototype case number one. I got these little LED grommets, so they need to be inserted in all these holes here. All the LED grommets are in. Okay, now we'll open this up. Yes, I already did this on the back of this panel and had to repair it with some tape. I mean, this is just a prototype. I already had it cut out in the, you know, it was before I found that battery, so that battery didn't fit when I had it centered on that back panel. So I just flipped it over and I made it on the front panel here. So we're going to insert these bezels for the displays that include the Mylar. And then make an attempt at trying to insert this. So you got to line up the LEDs and the grommets at the bottom here and try to get the seven segment displays to line up in the bezel. And every time you pick it up, everything kind of falls backward and see how the LEDs down at the bottom are coming through. I mean, there's this fine line where you got to get this stuff to fit through here. And then when, you, when you're sure that everything's good and it's not going to break, you just got to put some pressure on it and push those LEDs through and let them clip into the grommets. So there's a little finessing here that I have to do to get this to come through. Now I take some of these little nylon screws and I'll put them in from the front through the holes that I punched and they go into these motherboard standoffs around the board. And that'll pull it tight to the front. Everything will fit nice. 
Righto, so here we go, sort of, on the final. Uh, I painted the box up, just hit it with some black paint. Uh, I put in my bezel, the 3D printed plastic bezels that I showed. Uh, four layers of red mylar sheet uh, with super glued in. This is the sensor for the infrared. Three LEDs, balls, strikes, outs, visitor home, and inning. Now, inside, we see the circuit board. And then this is my battery power pack. And how this hooks up is like so. So here's the battery pack. The power will come in and power up to here, but if you want to charge it, there's a reverse, so you can take it out the side here, and you can plug it into this power adapter and charge it. Okay, so if we want to turn it on, we should be able to just flip this power on. Okay, and it powers on. Now the reflection is going to be hard to see, but the remote control, uh, home, score up, visitor score up or down. This changes the inning. So first inning and the little dot, which is hard for you to see, the second, bottom, third, bottom, fourth, bottom, and then down here, balls, strikes, and outs. When you're ready to go on the move, take your carry handle and go. So there we go. There's your little kit. This project was way more involved than I thought it would be. It took me about a year on and off playing around with it, but I learned a lot during this process. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something along the way, and thanks for watching.